What's up guys, it's Justin here. Today I've got a comparison for you between the Microsoft Surface Laptop and the MacBook Pro 13 inch without a touch bar. Both are the 2017 current models. So the reason why I want to compare these two computers is in terms of build quality, form factor, they are very similar and they also come in at the exact same price point in the respective models at $1,300. For the MacBook, that's the base model and for the Microsoft Surface, that is the mid model. As a student myself, I get asked about laptop suggestions all the time and I believe that those who are willing to spend a bit more money at about $1,300 are looking for something that will last them more than just a couple years and you're likely going to be comparing these two computers because because of the fact that they are actually very similar in many ways aside from the whole software. So in this comparison, I've tried to keep things as unscientific and fair as possible and try to go off of my personal experience from using both computers as to which one is going to be better suited for which types of people. I also did a full review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop that I'll leave a link down in the description section below and also make sure you subscribe to the channel for more summer and back to school videos, leave a like on this video and also drop a comment down below as to which computer you think is best for you. But let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to the specs, these two models are priced at 1300 USD at the time of this video and that is for the baseline MacBook Pro 13 inch without the touch bar and the mid configuration of the Microsoft Surface Laptop. The 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inch has a 2.3 GHz KB Lake i5 7360U model processor with integrated Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics, 8 gigs of RAM and also 128 gigs of storage. The Microsoft Surface Laptop on the other hand at $1300 is going to get you an Intel Core i5 7200U processor clocked in at 2.7 GHz, Intel HD Graphics 620, 8GB of RAM and also a 256GB SSD. When it comes to design, I don't think there's any argument that these are amongst the best looking laptops on the market and also the best built. They've gone for a different type of style but are also quite similar in many ways. The MacBook weighs in just a hair over 3 pounds and 14.9mm thick and the carved unibody aluminum design, I have to say is probably the best on any 13 inch computer hands down. There's literally no flex when it comes to the display, the keyboard, the computer in general is just very precise. The hinge is very sturdy and there's really no complaints whatsoever when it comes to build quality on MacBooks. The Surface Laptop is lighter at 2.76 pounds and comes in at 4.77 millimeters thick. It's also made out of metal and feels very precise. The hinge is very strong. I'm also personally a huge fan of the angular design on the edges. And when you open up the computer, you have a very unique design touch that you won't find on any other computer, which is the Alcantara finish that lines the trackpad area. It's nice soft feel is very welcoming and I think it looks great, but if you remember from my review, I did complain about the fact that I'm afraid it will get dirty over time, especially if you have any oils or greases on your finger. In the build category, both computers are solid and I don't think you'll have any issue with either one in terms of durability over a longer period of time. Moving on to the displays, the MacBook Pro has a 13.3 inch glossy panel that has a 2560 by 1600 resolution at a 1610 aspect ratio and 227 PPI. It has a wide P3 color gamut which is great for photo and video work and the colors are very accurate, they're very vibrant and you just can't go wrong with a retina display. The Surface Laptop on the other hand has a larger 13.5 inch pixel sense display with a 3 to 2 aspect ratio at a 2256 by 1504 resolution and a 201 PPI. It also has a fairly accurate coverage of 79% on Adobe RGB and 99% on sRGB and I think the colors are also very good on the Surface computer. And an extra feature that you don't have on the MacBook is that it also has a touch screen that works with the pen, but the screen is slightly wobbly and although the touch screen is very responsive, it's not something that I'll find myself using that much, but still nice to have. Although you can't go wrong with either display, I believe that the MacBook Pro 13 inch has the better screen with the Retina display. In the category of keyboard and trackpads, the Microsoft Surface Laptop was very comfortable to type on and one of the better keyboards that I've tested out. I found myself typing very fast and the keys are definitely more responsive than you're going to find on the MacBook. That's going to come down to personal preference as to whether you prefer the more responsive feel or the clicky feel of the Butterfly 2 switches. And the glass trackpad on the Microsoft Surface Laptop is nice to use but I do find the click very loud. The MacBook on the other hand has the new butterfly switches which at first may be a little bit strange but being someone who has used the Mac I might be a little bit biased but I actually really enjoy the MacBook keyboard and is one that I prefer. The keys are also ever so slightly tighter on the MacBook but it just comes down to which one you're going to get used to because over time I think on either computer you're going to be able to type very fast. Even though the Microsoft Surface Laptop had a great trackpad though, the one on the MacBook has the Force Touch and is just so much better feeling when it comes to the clicking. It feels just like a normal trackpad despite it using vibration motors to give the click effect. 
And that also gives you an extra level of customizability as well when it comes to using the whole surface for gestures. I personally don't find myself using the gestures, but in terms of the clicking experience, I prefer the MacBook over the Microsoft Surface. And despite the Microsoft Surface laptop having a great trackpad that is nice and easy to use, I would have liked to see it be a little bit bigger because I noticed quite a bit of extra space around it. In the end, I still definitely prefer to use a mouse over a trackpad, so I'm going to leave my favorite ones down in the description section below. When it comes to ports, I don't think either of these computers has nailed this category down. They both have their own trade-offs and benefits, and it just comes down to your workflow as to which one you prefer. The MacBook Pro without a touch bar literally just has two USB 3 slash Thunderbolt 3 ports because this is a non-touch bar model, and if you go up to the touch bar model, which costs quite a bit more, then you get four ports in total, which are all the same. Both ports on this MacBook can be used for transferring data and also charging, along with connecting any external accessories or displays. Although these are some very future-proof ports that are very capable and fast and have huge bandwidth, it's just not convenient at the moment, but that is definitely the direction we're going. As for now, I'm just going to have to get used to the dongle life, and two ports is relatively hard to work with, especially when one is taken up for charging. The Surface Laptop, on the other hand, has a single USB 3.0 port and also a mini display port for a display. And when it comes to charging, you have a proprietary Microsoft-like MagSafe connector for the other side. I think for students, the Surface Laptop is going to be more convenient because you often do have to use USB flash drives or hard drives, and you might just forget your adapter that one day and you can't bring up your project on the computer. But I think the best way to describe it is that the MacBook is just a bit too far ahead where it's still a bit inconvenient while the Surface Laptop is a bit behind. And if they have just added a single USB-C port to the equation, I would have given the edge to the Surface Laptop. I think the best example of a perfect I.O. and a good medium was the HP Spectre 13, which had both USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 ports and also a USB 3.0 port in case you needed it. Moving on to software, this is the most subjective category and what I'm not going to go into too much detail with because it really comes down to your personal use. From a student perspective, I know a lot of engineering students, medical students, or those who are in computer sciences are definitely going to want to go towards a PC because I have a few friends that got a MacBook. And even when running stuff like Bootcamp or Parallels to run Windows on their MacBook, it just wasn't convenient and they ended up having to sell their MacBooks to get a Windows computer. It really does come down to your programs because there are certain applications that are only compatible with Windows. With the MacBook running Mac OS X Sierra at the moment, you're getting a very simplified and visual intuitive interface that is much less customizable than, of course, the Windows. Things that would be proprietary to a Mac though include Final Cut Pro 10 or Apple programs, and also the fact that you're within the Apple ecosystem, so if you're a user of the iPhone and use iMessage a lot, notes, reminders, calendar, and stuff like that, and you really want to stay within your ecosystem, then even though it's kind of a weird deciding factor to go for a computer because of that, you're definitely going to enjoy the MacBook more. On the other hand, the Microsoft Surface Laptop ships with Windows 10S, and I think the first thing you should do before even charging up the computer is upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, which will be free until the end of the year, and then it will cost $50. Because Windows 10S doesn't allow you to install any applications outside of the Microsoft Store, making it pretty much useless for the most part, especially if you just spent over $1,000 on this computer. I think Windows users and Mac users know for the most part which operating system is going to be for them, and I see more people actually switching from Windows to Mac as opposed to the other way around, but I'm not saying one is better than the other because I have seen firsthand that it really comes down to the programs you use. For media consumption, I think speakers are something that is often overlooked by many computers, but both of them here have done it very well, and that's going to be great for watching movies, listening to music while you're doing your homework, and for those who just don't have a speaker set up because of space if you're in a dorm, the MacBook probably has the best 13-inch computer speaker you're ever going to find at the moment, and there's one on each side, they are loud and clear. The Surface Laptop on the other hand sounds very good as well, and there's actually no speaker grills because the Alcantara allows the sound to resonate through the Surface. The sound comes through the keyboard and is relatively loud, but here's a sound test comparing both of them kind of side by side. One of the most important things when it comes to these computers though is the battery life. Both of these computers claim a 10 hour manufactured battery life, which often consists of manufactured tests such as watching a movie at like 40% brightness and everything in airplane mode, stuff like that. So I've used these computers as my daily for a couple days at a time and believe I have a pretty good idea of the battery life. When it came to just taking some notes and surfing the web, I was able to get about eight hours on both computers, which is really solid, especially for a regular school day. 
When it came to work that required a bit of graphics such as Photoshop or running Premiere to video edit, I was able to get about six to six and a half hours on the Surface laptop and about five to five and a half hours on the MacBook Pro. Going back to ports though, one great thing about the MacBook Pro 13 inch here is that you have the USB-C port, which we sort of love and hate, but one great thing about it is that you're able to charge it with an external battery, which is awesome. Meanwhile, if you wanna charge a Microsoft Surface laptop during the day, you're gonna to have to go and find a wall plug. Not to forget the webcams, they both have a 720p webcam that should be good enough for conference calls, but one great feature that the Microsoft Surface has is Windows Hello. This allows you to set it up so that it can recognize your face to unlock your laptop instead of having to type in your entire password, which is just a nice extra layer to have. But here's a look at the side-by-side -side quality between the Microsoft Surface laptop and the MacBook Pro 13-inch webcams. So benchmarks are going to be the last thing we talk about here and it's just simply irrelevant when it comes to the experience you're trying to go for because each computer has its own optimizations in terms of how well programs run. On the Geekbench test though, the MacBook Pro 13 inch came out with a score of 4,477 and 9,000 for multi-core. As for the disk speed, although you're only getting 128 gigs instead of 256 gigs on the Surface laptop for the same price, the speeds are incredible and Apple has improved that once again in the 2017 model. The Microsoft Surface Laptop, on the other hand, through the Geekbench tests, got $38.95 for single core and $75.96 for the multi-core. But you have to remember that each of these computers have different i5 models, with the MacBook Pro having a 7360U clocked in at 2.3 gigahertz, while the Microsoft Surface Laptop has a 7200U i5 clocked in at 2.7. As for the SSD speed, although you're getting more storage on the Microsoft Surface Laptop, it is quite a bit slower than what you're getting on the MacBook. From my testing, I got around 240 read and around 650 right. Still some pretty decent numbers, but could be a lot better. The real life tests I decided to run on both these computers though were some video editing in Premiere where I exported the same file with the exact same settings with the same color corrections at a 1080p resolution. The Microsoft Surface Laptop took 6 minutes and 30 seconds while the MacBook Pro took 3 minutes and 34 seconds. And although I was a bit surprised, I believe a factor in that is that the MacBook has the Intel Iris Plus 640 and faster disk speeds which could play a slight factor in the export times. While the Microsoft Surface Laptop has the Intel HD Graphics 620 which is not as powerful as a 640. If you plan to do a lot of video editing, I would suggest that you go with the MacBook Pro because you can use Final Cut Pro 10 and that allows you to have an optimized experience through Apple software running on an Apple computer. Even though people are gonna make fun of Final Cut for being just way too simple and less feature packed compared to Premiere, one thing that you can't argue is that it's just very well optimized and extremely fast and is still able to run quite well even on baseline MacBooks. If you plan to game a lot though, I wouldn't really suggest these two computers because they don't have dedicated GPUs and are just not made for that. But with that being said, if you plan to use a $1300 instead of buying a laptop and building a desktop computer, then you have yourself a computer that can game and can edit much better than both these computers combined. But I'm sure a lot of what you're paying for here is down to the brand name, the build quality, and also the portability factor of these two laptops. But I've been talking for a minute now, so let's go ahead and just wrap things up. So when it comes to hardware, both of these computers are top notch. It's really neck and neck in terms of build quality. I think they're both very well built. I personally prefer the MacBook's metal finish on the trackpad area as well. And despite the Alcantara being very fancy, it's just something that I'm afraid of in terms of durability long term. The displays on both computers are very nice. I think the MacBook one does look better, but you do have the option to use a touchscreen and a pen on the Surface computer, which could be important for some people. The keyboard on trackpad, on the other hand, is great on both computers, and the keyboard, I believe, is subjective based on what type of typing experience you might like. The MacBook is just what I'm used to, and the Surface laptop has a more responsive and tactile key. While the trackpad, despite being great on both computers, is better on the MacBook because of the forced touch, and I think Apple has really set the standard for the best trackpad in any computer. Battery life was great and very close on both models, and the portability is almost the same in terms of footprint and a bit lighter when it comes to the Microsoft Surface laptop. Laptop. I'm personally a Mac user as I've been part of the ecosystem for years and I also use Final Cut Pro 10 to edit so personally my pick would be the MacBook Pro 13 inch without the touch bar but I would have liked to see more storage than 128 gigs because I do not think that is enough. The Microsoft Surface Laptop though doesn't really have any major flaws with just some small complaints when it comes to the ports and I.O. but I really enjoyed using it just as much when it came to just general productivity and I think for people who decide to gravitate towards the Microsoft Surface Laptop you're going to be completely happy with your purchase and it should last you for the next few years. 
But this wraps it up from a Microsoft Surface laptop and Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch without the touch bar comparison, 2017 models. And I think a lot of people back to school are going to be considering these two computers, whether you're in high school or going into university, because I think both options are great, well built and very reliable and should last you the next couple years if you're willing to invest the money. But thanks so much for sitting through this video if you did and listening to my boring voice and I'll see you all in the next one.